This is one of the rare times in scripture that we hear from Amos. Amos is one of the minor prophets. And we don't hear about him too much, but it's, it's so interesting that he was a landscaper, essentially. He was a, a dresser of sycamore trees, and not only that, he was a shepherd. Not nearly what you would choose as prophetic material. Someone who is going to go where he went, which is essentially to the Hamptons. So they take this poor shepherd landscaper and they send him out to Beverly Hills to preach to the rich people about how they should be poor. Jesus is sending out the apostles two by two. Apostles who, remember, were mostly fishermen for the most part. General laborers. They're not philosophers, they're not theologians. And so he's sending them out two by two with full confidence that they will do what he wants them to. St. Paul says the Ephesians, we receive our full share of the Spirit. And we remember Jesus said, do not worry about what you will say. The Spirit will give you words that they will be unable to refute or deny. So we see here in the, the readings for today, Jesus is choosing certain individuals to go out and be prophets, even though they might seem inept. And he's choosing each of us to be his prophets, even though at times we look at ourselves and think that we might be inept or we're not capable. We're not philosophers or theologians. We haven't studied this. We're not as confident. We don't have those gifts. There's a special school in New York, and this school is for children who cannot learn like everybody else. So it's a, a school for special children, if you will. And at the end of each year, they have a volunteer dinner and a donor dinner. It kind of recognizes everybody who gives money to them and who has helped them throughout the year. And every year, the keynote speaker is one of the parents. And one particular year, the keynote speaker got up to give his talk, and he began like this. Where is God's perfection in my son? Now you can imagine how quiet the crowd got when he said this. A little awkward, if, if not uneasy, about what he was going to say next. And he repeated the question, where is God's perfection in my son? We know that God does everything perfectly. But my son Shea cannot speak like other children. He cannot learn like other children. He cannot run and play like other children. And so where is God's perfection in my son? And he went on to say, I believe that when God gives a child like this to the world, that the perfection he seeks is in the way others respond to that child. And he went on to tell a story about him and Shea. They're walking through the streets of New York, some father-son time, and they come upon this park, and in the park there's a pickup game of baseball. And as soon as his dad saw the game, he tried to inch his son away from it because he knew what his son was going to ask if he could play. And as much as he tried to inch Shea away from the field, Shea was growing closer and closer to the field. And so he knew eventually he'd have to ask the inevitable question and take whatever grief came with that. So the father approached the boys on the diamond and he asked the question, look, can you give my son a glove? Just send him out in the field. You know, you don't even have to throw to him just so he feels like he's a part of the game. And then he looked around and everybody's head was down. Nobody would take a leadership role here. Until finally the pitcher said, all right, we'll give him a glove, we'll put him out in left field, we'll let him go there. Well, Shea was overjoyed, as was his father, as you can imagine. So he greedily took the glove and ran out to left field, and he was focused for about a second. And then he started looking around, and he was playing with the flowers and doing flips in the grass and everything else. But that's okay, he was playing. He was playing baseball. Now the two teams were pretty good. And it came to the game coming to a close, and they were about tied up. And his father is sitting there just kind of watching the game, when all of a sudden he notices his son approaching the plate with a bat. 
Now, Shea had never picked up a bat before. He'd never played baseball before. And he put his head in his hands and he said, please don't let him bat. You know, he's been doing so good, but the game's close and I don't want you to be angry. And, well, sure enough, they put him at the plate with the bat. And the pitcher, to his credit, he moved up a few yards and then he threw in a low lob. And it went up and it went down. And Shea had just awkwardly kind of swung at the thing. He had no chance of ever hitting it. So the catcher got up and he showed him the proper way to hold the bat. The pitcher moved up a little bit more and he threw in a second pitch. And again, he awkwardly swung at this ball. He had no chance of hitting it. And he stood there. And then something amazing happened. The catcher took off his glove and his helmet. And he stood behind that little boy and grabbed the bat with him. And the pitcher threw a ball, and they swung together, and they at least made contact this time. And the ball rolled about halfway between home plate and the pitcher. And the catcher shouted, run! Now this kid had never run before in his life, let alone run to first base. But he went in that direction, and he ran. And the pitcher walked over and picked up the ball that he easily could have thrown to first. And he threw it way over the first baseman's head out into the right field. The kid got to first base, and they shouted at him again, his own teammates, run, run to second. Well, he didn't know where second was. So the second baseman ran over and ran with him to second base. By this time, the first baseman had thrown the ball way out into left field. He rounded second base, and he kept going. Run to third. And by the time he came home, everyone was running. Everyone was cheering. The father ended his talk and he said, that day, those boys reached their level of God's perfection. You see, sometimes when a, God allows a child like this to come into the world, when God allows a child like this to come into the world, the perfection he seeks is in the way others respond to that child. Let us stand now and profess our faith. I believe.